Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Jillian Barry, and I am super excited for today's video because I'm going to be telling you guys exactly how to write, illustrate, and publish your very own book. And I'm going to tell you all the secrets you need to know in order to get your book in all the top bookstores, websites around the world. And I'm just going to tell you exactly how easy this is. I have done this. I did it a couple years ago. I learned so much along the way. So I'm going to tell you the process. It's very easy and it's a lot less money than I think most people think to get it going. So I'm going to go over everything in this video that you need to know. And you're going to want to stick around to the end. It's going to be really good. And if there's anything that I happen to miss out in this video that you're still wondering, then definitely comment down below. I'm happy to answer for you guys and help you achieve your dreams of publishing your very own book. But there's been a lot of exciting things happen throughout my life, but definitely one of the most exciting was when I actually like finished and received like print copies of my own book and I logged online and I saw it at Barnes and Nobles, Chapters, all the top websites around the world. It was just so exciting and it's still so exciting to this day that I have actually like taken this idea from my head and turned it into a real book. So I know so many people ask me all the time, how did you do this? And so many people wonder and have the dream of writing their own book. So I'm here to tell you exactly how to do that. So give this video a big thumbs up right now and make sure you subscribe because I will be creating more videos based around this topic as well and other great videos every single week. Okay, so first of all, you guys wanna have your idea. Then you wanna somehow think of how you're gonna turn your idea onto paper or onto something to start to materialize that idea. I always knew that I wanted to be an author in some shape or form. And I love self-development, things like that. And I always wanted to write a kid's book as well. And I thought a kid's book would be the easiest sort of start to do my first book. So I chose the idea of doing a kid's book. I just want to suggest too, when you're thinking of ideas and when you're trying to get in that state of writing your book, I just want to suggest like try and get in that flow state, in a good state, do whatever you can to make yourself feel good and get in that state to just writing a book is something creative. You want the book to come from like that higher self part of you, that creative part of you, not necessarily just the more like logical part of you, depending what type of book you're writing, of course. Anyway, I had my idea. I knew I wanted to write the kids book and I knew I wanted the title something about Princess Papaya. I am a raw vegan, so I wanted my book to be something that taught kids the, about real living foods like avocado, papaya, how happy it made them feel. I thought I wanna find a website where I can just do a draft version of my book and make it just seem more real online. And this is what worked for me. So I found a website, I think it was called Story Jumper. And I used this to create the first draft version of my book and actually got a hardcover printout mailed to me as well. So that was pretty exciting, even though if you guys saw my first print cover, it was so amateur and such a joke, but I was so excited because it was just showing like, oh, this is something that's going to be real and it was so exciting. I used Story Jumper. It was great. I can link them down below for you guys, but there's many different places you can go online. You can use uh, Google Drive to do this. Many people write their books in Google Drive. You can use uh, Canva to write your book, uh, which I will link below as well, but many other places do what works for you. Some people, when they write a book, they feel like they have to write it down on paper. So if that's what works for you, then like get a special notebook, a special pen, do whatever works to like start writing and get your book written. After I had my rough draft of my book written and sort of an idea of the images and the flow and sort of where I wanted to go with it creative wise, I thought this book needs to be proofread professionally because I mean, I, I'm a university graduate. I went to school and everything. It, just with texting the last 20 years and stuff like that, my grammar has gotten pretty sloppy. So I knew that I wanted my book to be as professional as possible. You definitely, I would suggest, unless your grammar is perfect, if you want a professional top level book, if you want it to be in bookstores and you just want to like take it serious and like go all the way with it, I would suggest you hire uh, someone to proofread it and edit it properly. So you can find people to do this on Fiverr or many different websites as well, and it's pretty inexpensive. So again, this whole process is pretty inexpensive. You're gonna see in this whole video, like it actually doesn't cost you that much to publish your own book. I just happened to meet somebody, it was like synchronicity, it was like perfect timing. One of the moms at my daughter's school, she was a editor, this is what she did for a living. I was talking to her one day. And so she offered to edit my book. She did it, I think it was no more than a couple hundred dollars. She did two versions of editing and it was a couple hundred dollars. And I do just wanna to say too, be careful who you tell your ideas to that you're writing a book because there was also somebody else at my daughter's school, a father that I mentioned I was writing a book to. And I was just like so driven and determined to get it in bookstores. And he was just a big naysayer saying, you won't, you can't get it in chapters. You can't get it here, get it there. 
So with something like a book, it's something a lot of people want to do and sometimes they might just, if they see somebody doing that and it's a dream of theirs, they might just want to put you down if they're not too happy with their life or what they're doing. So be careful who you share your ideas with along the way. Maybe keep it secret or if you're okay with other people like putting in negative vibes, then fine. But for me, it worked best not to tell too many people when in my initial stages. So I do just want to mention too, I mean, you could use Grammarly for editing your grammar, stuff like that. I know a friend who did that. So that might be an option for you as well. After I had the book like in the draft online and then I had it edited professionally by the professional editor. I thought like, how am I gonna turn this into an actual book, get it in bookstores, what am I gonna do next? My husband, he had suggested, and a couple friends actually suggested as well, who I was quite close to, who knew about the idea. They suggested that I go on Kickstarter. So this is something you guys do not have to do. Looking back, if I were to do another book, I wouldn't use Kickstarter, but I'm just sharing my journey and it's an option for some people who might wanna use it. For those of you who don't know, Kickstarter is a business or entrepreneurial website where you can post an idea, a product, any type of business thing that you want to turn into material form and you want to raise funds for. So it's a funding website, but it's a business website. So I created a big campaign for my book. I went on Kickstarter and I did that. Looking back, like I didn't so much love it because I, I mean, you're getting funds from family, friends, and from strangers on Kickstarter, but I kind of felt like I had to like solicit family and friends too much, so that's, I don't like doing that, that wasn't for me. But that might be an option for you. I know books are a big thing on Kickstarter, people use it to raise funds. But again, I've learned through this whole process, you actually don't need that many funds. I wanted to have a big stock of books to go around to stores with and things like that, so that's part of the reason I did do that campaign, so I would have the funding for all that and have the funding to pay the illustrator and everything, because at the time I didn't. But you do not have to take that route, I just wanted to share that in case that might be an option for you to consider. Now comes time for the illustrator. So in some cases, you guys might be creative enough or love your creative abilities enough that you feel like you can design and illustrate your entire book yourself without needing somebody else. And if you can, I think that's absolutely amazing. But I knew my strengths were not in drawing and doing the creative aspect. I knew that I wanted a professional to help me with that. So another synchronicity happened to come into my life with the book because I was doing a photo shoot with my daughter and the photographer I knew quite well. And so I had told her about the book. And she had mentioned that she knew somebody that could illustrate. He was fast and amazing. So she connected me with him. And if you want the information of who I use, then definitely comment down below or contact me. I would be happy to share his information. He was great. And what I liked about him was he was super fast and easy to work with. But I want to give you guys some suggestions that I learned along the way for finding an illustrator. And I do want to tell you the co his cost for illustrating the whole book start to finish was between $2,000 and $2,500 US dollars. So if you have a budget for it, do it. I mean, and I mean, you can also totally find illustrators for less money. I'm sure you can go on Fiverr or find somebody creative you know or work with somebody and do it for a lot less. I did want to have some creative say over the book. I didn't want to just hand it over to somebody else. So you work together with them. And I knew I wanted this to be the image of the front of the book. So I went on a stock photo website and I purchased the rights to use this image. It was inexpensive to use this image on the front of the book. So that's an option for you as well to get a plan and go on one of the stock image websites. You can purchase the rights to use it on print books like this. I did that and then I worked with the illustrator. I knew I wanted it purple. That was back and forth. It was quite quick and it was a seamless, pretty good process. But I did learn, which I wanna share with you guys as well, what I suggest is you go to the bookstore and you find your niche, sort of if it's children's books, if it's self-help, whatever it is, and look around and many times you can see on the book, in the book, it gives credit to who the illustrator is and if it's not there then you can find it online. So there was another book, a successful children's book called Rebel Girls, which I loved. So I found their contact and they were actually a little bit less money than the illustrator that I did use but they were taking a lot more time to do it and I wanted something in a more timely manner. But for my next book, I would absolutely consider them as well. But my main point here just being, if you guys like are wanting somebody that's amazing for an illustrator, that might be an option as well. Go to the bookstore, find some covers in your niche that you absolutely love and that you're drawn to. Contact them and then find a way to make your cover your own. If you like their artistic abilities, like work with them to make a cover and a book illustrated the way you want. And I think that's a great tip right there. Okay guys, so at this point I had the book written, professionally edited, and I had worked with my illustrator to have a copy done online looking great and had a rough print copy as well, which was amazing. And I had my Kickstarter campaign done as well, which was great. 
but keep in mind you don't have to do that Kickstarter campaign, just sharing my journey. So at this point I was thinking too, like how am I going to get my book, how am I going to like print this book and get it into stores, that was always my dream, how am I going to get it into Barnes & Noble, Chapters, all the top bookstores around the world, how am I going to get it in front of people. So I started, um, now that I had a rough copy of my book and had it proofread and everything and it was looking professional, I started looking around on the web and researching publishers. So I tried many different publishers and I learned like they're super hard to reach, especially if you have not written any books before. And I was getting quite frustrated. And even some stores I would go in that I thought it was suitable for, like Whole Foods, and I would find you can't talk to us anymore, you have to talk to head office. And it was, it's just so frustrating and hard to reach people. So then I thought, you know what, I started learning about self-publishing. And I learned too, many times traditional authors earn between like 10, 12, up to 20% of royalties off their books. And then many times self-published authors earn a lot more, usually between 40 and 60% royalties off their book. But keep in mind, if you get set up with the top publisher and you're getting your book like blasted all over the world, in many cases, that's probably worth it, in my opinion, anyway, working with a great publisher. But many of us, when we're starting out, it's really hard to get your book in the hands of those publishers and take that route. And in this day and age, with the control we have over social media, our YouTube channels, our Instagram, our Facebook, all our websites, everything, many of us, there's no better person to sell our own book than ourselves anyway, which is what I thought with my book. Who better to sell my book than me? So in many cases, you are the best salesperson for your book, and self-publishing might be a great route for you because, again, I'll show you throughout this video, it's very little money, and it might be a great route for you because you're most passionate about your book than anybody else. And for a first book, I think it's a great route. A lot of people make a lot of money and are hugely successful taking the self-publish option. And it just totally makes sense in this day and age, like I said, with all the social media and all the outlets you have to push, hustle, and sell your book yourself. So why not get more royalties and collect more money off the book that you've worked so hard to create? When I decided this whole route of working with a publisher was not working out, it was giving me headaches, it was just not, didn't seem like the right path to take, then I started looking into the self-publishing route. And I am so glad that I did this, especially for my first book. It was an amazing process. So I happened to discover this website in this company, which I will link down below if you guys are interested in joining and doing your book this way. It was called Ingram Spark. Working with this company is exactly how I got my book online at all the top bookstores around the world. So you can look at my book at Chapters, Barnes & Noble. They also coordinate and handle putting it on Amazon and everywhere as well. And then they just pay you quarterly and they handle everything. And it has been an amazing experience. And I think it cost me around, it was 50 to $70 to work with Ingram Spark at the time. It wasn't very much money at all. So I cannot recommend them enough. I think it's like just like a juicy little secret I have. I think most people don't realize like that you can work with a company like that for such little money and upload your book, upload all the specifics, and then boom, before you know it, it's online at all those major, in all those major stores, which is absolutely incredible. It was so exciting to me. And when you can get, when you can achieve that and get your book online at all those major stores, it looks so good when you approach the smaller stores in person. So I've done that. It's been super successful for me. I can say, look, it's carried at Chapters, Barnes & Noble, and I easily am able to get it into these boutique stores and other places that are suitable for my book, like juice bars and things like that. I've done book signings, and it's been quite a success, and it's been just an amazing, loving, incredible experience. So I definitely recommend Ingram Spark. They are just incredible. Like I said, I will link it down below if you guys are interested in using them as well. That's exactly what I did to turn my book dreams into a reality, get it on all those sites, get it out there everywhere. So they handle so much, but you have to also do so much online work. You create an account and you have to upload your book. You have to make sure everything is sized properly. You have to handle getting your barcode, things like that. But again, if you guys want any more help on anything, comment down below. I'm happy to help you guys. But Ingram Spark, it was, it was amazing. So also things you'll have to think of when you're working with Ingram Spark or anybody to upload your book is you'll have to think of the price. So that's a big thing you guys want to consider as well. So I priced my book, it was $23.99 Canadian. In the UK, it's $14.99. And in the US, it is $18.99. So I'm happy with the price. I feel like I could have maybe got, gone a little bit higher. I don't make as much off this book because of the size I chose and being that it's a hardcover and it's all color. But to me, 
the, it, the book being such a great quality was more important to me. So you have to think about your goals with the book. Is your goal to make the most money possible off each book or to have the quality up there or meet somewhere in the middle? So you'll think about all those things and you can work, if you're working with an illustrator, they will help you with all those things as well, which is great. So the price and then also the trim size is something very important that you will want to think about when you're working with somebody like Ingram Spark or when you're creating your book as well. So again, that's something I worked with my illustrator to decide on. Initially, we had gone with something smaller and then I thought, no, you know what, this is a kid's book, I want something larger. And then we landed on this size, which I thought was perfect. And a good idea to try and decide on a trim size for you is to go in the bookstore and sort of find the niche you're looking to write a book about. If it's kids books, go in the kids book section and sort of see what type of book you want to, what type of size you like and sort of get some ideas like that. And then also I suggest going in the bookstore and looking at the prices people charge for their books. So initially I did want to charge less and I wanted to have the book cost a lot less and reach a lot more people. But then I realized just it was losing money. Like it wasn't worth it i couldn't charge any lower really so another thing if you're using something like ingram spark which i did as it gives you calculators cost calculators when you're planning your book upload and you can see at a certain price in a certain region how much money you'll make or how much money it'll lose so you know how much you have to charge for your book overall the experience was great with them like i said it was a lot of like paperwork and stuff too but to me it was totally worth it and it was so exciting and i mean you guys i got my book in all the major bookstores i've got it around the world in a lot of also like boutique stores in person as well and juice bars and things like that because that's totally fitting for my book I've also gone to read my book at my children's school, other places as well, and it's been amazing. I absolutely love it. I promote it on my YouTube channels as well. And one thing I wanna say to you guys before I forget is if you're wondering like how, how do, do you pay when the book is like on chapters, Barnes and Noble, stuff like that. You don't because it's done, when you do it this way through a company like I did, this method, which is becoming very popular, I think, and a lot of people are doing, but I still feel like a lot of people don't know about. That's why I wanted to make this video. But anyway, when you do it this way, books are done print on demand. So you don't have like a huge upfront cost. I did my Kickstarter campaign and I had like all the extra cost to do a bulk order of books here in Toronto. Locally, I did a big, huge batch. So I would have extra to go around to stores and stuff like that. But if you don't want to do any of that and you don't feel like you need like a lot of hard copies to start, which most people don't, you can just take like that route, the online route like I did and you can get your book. It's just print on demand. So when people order, it's printed on demand. They receive their book in person from the store, the company they're ordering from. And it's super professional and super amazing. And also I did create a Kindle online version as well at the same time with my book. I did that through Ingram Spark as well. For me, for the kids book, I wanted to have a print copy as well. I think when you have both, it makes you look super professional and it gets your book just taken a lot more serious as well. I feel like I have gone over most of the sort of broad and major points in this video start to finish that I have done to create this book. I'm sure there's some things I forgot because it has been quite a process, but an amazing process at that. But again, if there's anything you guys are thinking of that I haven't answered, definitely comment down below and I definitely will create more videos letting you guys know exactly how much I make off this book, stuff like that, and how I promote it and different things. So definitely make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.